Hey everybody, welcome to Dan Bowman Photography. Today I'm going to be talking about the Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2 film camera. Now this is going to be a really in-depth and longer video than some of my other content, so if you're just coming here to find out a specific piece of information about the camera, I've created jump cards down below so you can skip ahead to a segment that might be more helpful, like say on how to load the film back or remove film from the film back. I'm also going to be splitting some segments of this video into separate videos, so if you would prefer to watch it that way, you can do that as well. So first off, I'm just going to give you some background about the camera. The Mamiya RZ67 was originally introduced in 1982, and the Pro 2 version came out in about 10 years later, 15 years later, in 1995. And this is a medium format film camera. It's a modular system too, which means you can take different parts uh, like the film back and the viewfinder and the lenses and interchange those pieces uh, for separate uh, accessories. Uh, this also shoots medium format film, uh, 120 millimeter film, and it creates six by seven centimeter uh, transparencies or negatives and you get 10 shots per roll of film. As the name suggests, these cameras were marketed towards professional photographers, and they were really popular, particularly in the fashion photography industry. So um, at the time, they were considered really high quality, highest standard, um, on competition with things like the Hasselblad system. But with the advent of digital photography, these systems have become much more affordable and average people like myself can go out and purchase them on the used market for very reasonable prices considering uh, the quality you get out of a camera like this. If you're looking for an all-around uh, film camera to use for everyday use in a lot of different situations, this is definitely not the camera system for you. It excels in some areas, but it's also very slow to use, so it's not going to be good for things like fast action, sports, uh, street photography. Those are not going to be really good things to shoot with the RZ67. But if you're interested in shooting landscapes or portraits or things where you have a little bit more time to set up your shot and get things in focus and get your exposure right, this is a fantastic camera because you can get some really, really excellent res results with the uh, high quality lenses and the large size of the negatives gives you a lot of detail that you won't be able to get out of some smaller formats or 35 millimeter film. I'll be doing a separate video on tips and things to look out for when purchasing an RZ67 on the used market, but for now I'll just say that you can get a really good condition kit with a film back, a standard lens, a view, waist level viewfinder, and the camera body for around $700. And this is if it's in really good condition. You can maybe get a Pro 1 model or something along those lines a little bit cheaper but I'll talk a little bit more about that in another video. For now I just want to go over the RZ67 and show you some of the features and uh, accessories for the camera and just give you a little bit more background on how to use it. So now I'm going to go over the basics of the Mamiya RZ67 and show you some of the different functions and features that are on the camera. So starting out, let's talk about the aperture. Like many cameras, the aperture is adjusted by a ring on the lens itself. Uh, right now I have the 110 millimeter f2.8 lens on this camera, and that is pretty much the standard lens for the camera. It's about equivalent of about a 60 millimeter lens, I think, on uh, 35 millimeter, if you want to think about it in those terms. So it's a little bit longer than normal. Um, the aperture goes to f2.8, which can give you a razor thin depth of field for uh, medium format 6x7 negatives. Uh, you can just really get some really shallow depth of field with that, which is really cool. And then the maximum aperture is it stops down to f32, which is also cool because that's fairly narrow and can give you very deep depth of field. On the um, on this side of the camera body, you have your shutter speed dial. And your settings go from 8 seconds and bulb, which you can set the camera to bulb to do long exposures. And the shutter is threaded for a cable release so that you don't have to hold the shutter down the whole time. Um, but it goes all the way to the fastest shutter speed, which is 1 400th of a second. 
One of the cool things about this camera is it is a leaf shutter camera, which means that the shutter is actually in the lens and not in the camera body itself, which allows you to, um, the leaf shutter allows you to sync your flash at any speed. Whereas with uh, traditional focal plane shutter that's in the body, you can usually only go to like a 30th of a second or a 60th of a second on a medium format camera. So that's pretty cool as well. Other settings for your shutter speed are AEF, which when you turn it to that, it locks into this position and you can shoot in aperture priority if you're using the metered prism. Now, in order to unlock this, you just press this dial down and then you can turn it in any direction. Um, if you set your shutter speed dial to RBL, you can attach lenses from the Mia RB67, which was the earlier model of this, which was, this model was based on. And then you can use those lenses on this camera. So that's pretty cool too, because the RB lenses are a little bit cheaper usually. And so you can really build out a kit that's more affordable that way. And with those, uh, those lenses, the shutter speed is actually controlled on the lens as well. So you just set this to RBL, set your shutter speed and your aperture on the camera, uh, or on the lens, I should say, itself, and you're ready to go. Talking a little bit more about the lens, um, it is an interchangeable lens camera, so you can remove the lens and put on other lenses, like I've suggested earlier. And in order to do that, you can simply turn this collar on the lens and then just pop it off. And then in order to put it back on, you just line up the red lines and then tighten the collar and you're good to go. Now one thing to note, if you're trying to take the lens off and it won't come off, you actually have to cock the uh, shutter in the lens before taking it off. Um, otherwise it will not remove from the body, it will stay locked to it. And I think you can't actually mount it to the camera either if it hasn't been cocked, but you can manually do that. Um, on the lens itself and then put it back on. All right, and that's pretty much the basics of the lens on the camera. So next let's talk about the viewfinder. So the standard camera comes with a waist level viewfinder and you can um, view your image through the top of the camera like this. And one of the things that's really trippy about this is your left and right orientation are reversed. So when you're moving the camera, say to the right, what's in the viewfinder is going to the left. So if you're looking down into the camera and there's something on the left side of your frame, it's actually going to be on the right side of the frame in your image. So um, if you use a prism viewfinder, it'll reverse this and you can sort of, and you can just view uh, the scene normally with the prism finder, but that takes a little bit of getting used to with the waist level viewfinder. I found composing with it a little bit tricky because I'll be looking at something and turning the camera and then the image is not going the way I expect it to. So that's a little bit tricky to get used to, but if you've used other medium format cameras that have a waist level viewfinder, this is probably something you'll be used to. Um, so one of the other cool things about this camera is the focusing screen on it is incredibly bright. I found that it's really easy to lock in the manual focus on the camera with, the, with how bright the viewfinder is. I've used other medium format cameras that are much trickier to really get that focus dialed in. And you really, um, medium format film is less forgiving in terms of focus. So any little errors you make, because the negative size is so big and there's so much detail and information there, if you're off by a little bit, it's much more noticeable than say 35 millimeter film. So in order to focus the camera, there are actually two knobs. You could focus it either by turning the knob on the left side of the camera or by turning the knob on the opposite side of the camera. And the knob on the right side of the camera also has a inner knob which is for finer tuning or, and critical focusing. So usually what I'll do uh, when I'm trying to focus on say a person's face or something if I'm taking a portrait is I'll get the focus in the ballpark with the uh, outer ring and then dial it in very finely with the inner ring. So that's pretty cool. And another feature that's really helpful is that there is a magnifier. So if you press this little dial here um, or this little switch, it'll pop out the magnifier and you can really get a better sense of 
your focus by using that. So you can really dial in very accurate focus. And then in order to um, depress the magnifier, you just press it down until it clicks into place. And then if you want to close your viewfinder, you just pinch and it drops down. One thing I forgot to mention about the focus is once you've dialed it in, you can actually lock it in place by pulling up the lever on the left side of the camera and that'll lock your focus. And then if you want to unlock it so you can turn the knobs again, you just simply push it back in the opposite direction and you're good to go. Um, this camera focuses with a bellows system and one of the advantages of that is you can get really close focus. And as you can see, um, the lens extends pretty far out on the camera. Now you're going to lose a little bit of light, um, so you have to compensate a little bit on your exposure. Uh, there's a chart on the side that <laughs> tells you how to do this. I don't find it to be that useful. Um, usually if I'm really extending this out really far to focus on something that's far, like, far away or close up, uh, I'll just open up by like one stop uh, to compensate and get a little bit more light onto the film. Alright, moving on. So on the side of the body, uh, you have a switch here, which um, the dot in the center means that you're taking a normal exposure so that when you advance the uh, advance lever on the side, it's going to advance the film to the next frame. Now if you want to do multiple exposures, you just turn this dial to M so that when you take your photo and cock the lens to the next uh, level, uh, it's not actually going to advance the film, it's just going to recock the lens and you can take multiple frames on the same image. Now if you want to uh, shoot in portrait orientation, you can turn this to R and this allows you to rotate the back and what that's going to do is actually turn your film so that it's in portrait orientation and there are frame lines in the viewfinder that compensate for this as well so that when you're framing up your shot, you can see um, where the lines are going to be. And this is really good because um, trying to turn a camera that's a big box like this on its side if you want to shoot in portrait orientation would be really awkward. I mean, you'd be trying to do like this and then focus and then shoot. It's just really a pain in the butt. So having the um, rotating back is really a huge convenience. To turn it back, just simply lock it back into place or turn it back into place and then set it back either to the center or the M if you want to do multiple exposures. So now moving on to the film back, uh, the Mamiya RZ67 has a detachable film back and in order to detach the back there is a lever here on the bottom and you just pull this off and the advantage of the detachable back is that you can actually have multiple backs and then swap them out mid roll so say you're shooting black and white film and you see a very colorful scene and you want to shoot that, you can pull out another back, pop it onto the camera so you have color film in it and shoot a roll that way. Um, you can purchase these backs separately. Um, one of the cool things about the Mamiya RZ67 system and other modular medium format systems is you can really customize it to some degree and build the camera to be the way you want. And so you can purchase all the different parts separately. You can purchase say a prism viewfinder, or different lenses and different types of film backs. So there are actually instant film backs too, so if you want to shoot Polaroid pack film, you can do that. Um, some other people have rigged uh, Fuji Instax film to be able to shoot on this too. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then you can also get 220 film backs. I wouldn't really recommend the 220 film back because 220 film is expensive and they don't make a lot of it anymore. It's a lot easier to find 120 film and it's actually cheaper to just buy two 120 rolls than a 220 roll in most cases. So um, that's something to consider. So now I just want to show you how to load film into the camera and we'll go and show you how to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to load some film into your Mamiya RZ67 film back. And now this is basically the same as if you have an RB67 as well, so this applies to both. So the first thing I want to note on the RZ67 is that if you don't have the dark slide in between the camera body and the film back, then when you go to detach the film back, this latch will not move and you will not be able to take the film back off. This is basically a prevention measure 
uh, to prevent you from accidentally uh, taking the film back off when you have uh, film in it or uh, accidentally exposing your roll. So in order to take the back off, you just need to place your dark slide in between the body and the back. And there are two white lines on the camera body that show where it goes in. So now you should be able to take the film back off of the camera by moving this latch over and the back just comes right off. Now to open up the camera back, I'm looking at the wrong side, there are two latches right here and they each just pop out and then you can open up the back. Now this whole piece detaches from this part of the back and this is where you're gonna load your film into. So in order to load up a roll, you wanna make sure that your take up spool is on this side of your film back. And I will just load up a roll of Velvia 50. Normally you wanna do this in subdued light. Um, I've never had trouble I usually will just stand in the shade even if I'm outside. I've never had trouble uh, with exposing a, a roll of film, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. You take this paper piece off of your roll of film, and then to get the film into your film back, you just want to press down this little silver lever, and that depresses this. And you just line up the film into the top part, Press that down, and then until that goes in right there. So now what you want to do is take your backing paper and you just roll it around this side of the film back like so. Just pull it, and then on this side, you're just going to slip the paper, kind of hard to see, but you just slip it into a notch in the take up spool and then just turn I usually turn slowly make sure that there's tension on that this is pulled tense against the back and then you just continue to turn onto the take up spool now you want to watch on this side for this start line and you just want to line this up with this little white dot here so you will just move it till it's there and then you're ready to put this back together. So this hole right here lines up with this notch and you just pop that right back on there, close the back up, and then push these two notches in. Then you just wanna put the back right back onto the camera. You can line up this white square there with this uh, red line. I usually like to do it like this to try to get them. It's usually a little bit tricky. Once those are lined up, then you just pull the switch down and it's back on. Now at this point, your marker here should still be at S for start. So in order to get to the first frame, you can either turn this or you can just move the film advance. You should see the knob and the thing there, the counter advancing. And then it automatically locks up when you get to one. And then you're basically ready to take your first shot. So once you have finished with your 10th shot, um, you just advance to the next frame, or in other words, advance to the end, and just continue to advance the film until you see it spinning very easily. Now at this point what you'll want to do, if you haven't already done so, is put your dark slide in between the camera body and the film back. And then you can remove the film back by flipping the switch. And popping these tabs open. Now your film should be entirely on the take up spool and to remove it, you'll just pull this, push this pin down and take it out. Now, 120 film rolls will have these tabs that you 
will eventually wrap around to seal the film to keep it from unrolling. And on Fujifilm, they already have a sticky surface, so you just peel this open and you wrap it around your film and just seal it like that. And then you're ready to either ship it off to a lab to develop or develop it at home. Now with Kodak film, you'll actually have to lick the end of it like a postage stamp or an envelope and seal it up that way because it doesn't have an adhesive on it. And that's how you take film out of the Mamiya RZ67 film back. Okay, so now we've got film in the camera and we're ready to shoot. So the first thing I usually do will uh, take my light meter out, my light meter app on my phone and get my settings dialed in. So I will set my aperture and my shutter speed to the settings that I want and then I will go about composing and focusing my image in the screen. I'll take the dark slide out of the back, slip it in here, and then check my focus and composition and press the shutter. And then after you press the shutter, you can just advance to the next frame. And that's how you take a photo with the RZ67. Now, if you're trying to set up a shot and you're pressing the shutter and it's not firing, um, one of the first things I would do is check to see if the dark slide is in between the camera. Uh, the shutter will not fire if the dark slide is in. It also won't fire if you have it set to this median point and you haven't advanced to the next frame or you haven't fully cocked the shutter and advanced to the next frame. So check the shutter advance or the frame advance on the side. And then another thing, it will not fire if there's no film in it. So I would check those things if you're trying to press the shutter and it's not firing. There are also a number of accessories that you can purchase from the RZ67 kit. Um, you can, like I said, you can purchase different viewfinders. Uh, one of the ones I would recommend is the Prism viewfinder. It just makes the, uh, composing your image a lot easier. And then you can also use aperture priority with the built-in meter. Um, I would probably still shoot in manual mode if I use that. I don't actually have the Prism finder. Um, they cost around $200, so uh, it can be a little bit pricey. And one thing to note is that you cannot use the Prism finder from the RZ67 Pro 1 on the Pro 2 camera. It will not work. Other things you can purchase, um, you can purchase a side grip that will screw into the tripod mount to make it a little bit easier to handhold. Um, once again, I don't have this, but that's something that's available. And you can also purchase a motor drive um, so that when you take a shot, it advances to the next frame automatically. So those are just a few of the accessories. I could go more depth in, in depth in another video about the accessories for this kit. If you would like, um, comment below and let me know if that's something you're interested in. So now I just want to go on and just show you some sample images that I took with this camera on a couple of different film stocks and just give you a sense of the beauty that you can get with the Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2. That's all I have on the Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And then you can also get in touch with me on Instagram. My handle is my name, Dan Bullman. And as always, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I try to put out a video every week and give you guys some really fun and informative content about film photography. So we'll see you soon, folks. This has been Dan Bullman Photography. Peace.